Um, first off, um, I learned last night that uh, Ron Rivera's mother passed away. So I want to uh, send our condolences from me and my family, the McDermott's, and uh, all the people in the Buffalo Bills uh, for, for Ron and, and his family. I um, want to thank our scouts for uh, our pro department really the last few weeks. You know, obviously there's rumors out there and swirling, and we'll get into some of that. But um, these guys, you know, for us acquiring two players at the end, there's a lot of watching tape, making calls, going through the process, going through contracts, going through everything to pare down what positions we're, we're targeting or, or, or what players we're looking into. So um, those guys did a great job of helping helping me kind of filter this down to the decisions we made yesterday. <clears throat> um, Safety-wise, you know, uh, we ended up with Dean Marlowe. You guys are very familiar with Dean. Um, you know, Sean and I had him in Carolina. We got, obviously, I think he started seven or eight games for us here in his time, uh, was a fill-in. And uh, if, if something happened to Jordan and Micah, kind of that third safety. So uh, with Micah being out for the year, um, and then Jordan uh, still being nicked up and you know, we can try to work his way back. Uh, this gives us a guy who knows um, our team, our defense. And we looked at, we probably narrowed it down to about 10 safeties um, the last few days. And even before Jordan uh, was, was re-injured the other night, we were still looking at that position, um, you know, knowing Micah wouldn't be back. So, um, but ultimately, you know, we just, you know, through all the calls and all the research, uh, we felt like the best fit ended up being Dean, and, and we made that move yesterday. Uh, running back-wise, I know that's been rumored a lot. Uh, I'd say a lot of those were probably more rumors than than all factual what was out there, but, you know, there's a lot of posturing that goes on and leveraging. And um, a couple of those, you know, I'll get into Naheem here in a minute, but, you know, I know it started with McCaffrey, uh, yes, that was the last draft I was there in Carolina. Know him well. You know, when you hear he's on the block, um, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence to not look into that. Um, the process of how we look into things from a scouting standpoint is our scouts are, they have teams they're responsible for, and they're tracking everything. And when you hear buzzes out there on Twitter, on, uh, in the media, whatever, that a player may be available, that's their job to turn on the film, evaluate them, and then look into them. And there are times when things get put out there that the Buffalo Bills are after this player. Sometimes I'm not even aware, and I say that in the sense that a scout may have, you know, we may have a scout and he's in charge of the Denver Broncos, and he may call his contact at that team and say, hey, is, you know, is this guy even available? Should I even mention him? Should I not? Sometimes you never even hear back whether the guy's available or not, and then you, you read two days later that we went after him. And so I say that just to help us all how the process works. You know, the, the Al, that leads me to Alvin Kamara. You know, that was the scouts looking into, you know, they put something out, you know, maybe Philly was in it or someone, I can't remember the team, and checked into it, never actually got an answer whether he was available or not, and then Sunday is reported on one of the shows that we were rebuffed. Well, I never spoke to their GM about, you know, that's just how the process works. So I want, you know, for all of us, that's how we work internally. Um, I know you guys have a job to do, but sometimes when you hear we're involved. Now, again, I did on Christian McCaffrey, I did speak to the Panthers GM, never made him an offer, but did stay in touch through the process. And ultimately, uh, it was going to be more than we were going to be able to do. So um, I think that's that. Naheem is a guy, um, <clears throat> you guys know me sometimes uh, with Steph or Emmanuel Sanders. Naheem's a guy I've looked into in the past. Uh, I think the first time we checked on him was the training camp of COVID. Um, and then checked on him again last off season before, uh, before we went after McKissick and then ultimately drafted James, but um, he's a guy, you know, we liked through the draft process all the way back in 2018. And, you know, obviously we saw him up close a few times, made some big plays in, in the playoff game against us. Um, and just, he's a, he, you know, he's more of a guy that's just a, a weapon with the ball in his hand, whether it's a punt returner, kick returner, 
as a receiver. Um, he runs jet sweeps. He runs the Wildcat. Um, <clears throat> so we just felt this was a chance to add another guy that Ken Dorsey and Josh and the crew can use, you know, just as another offensive piece. And again, um, helps us as a punt returner too. We lost Crowder earlier in the year. Shakir's done a really good job, but as a rookie, that's that's a lot, and he's still trying to get his feet settled at, at wide receiver. And so to add a guy with um, with his abilities a punt return, just thought it made too much sense. Um, none of this was a negative on Zach. It just, you know, I think we all saw. I, you know, Zach is a very good player, and I want everybody to understand that. Zach's going to have success in this league. Um, but the way our offense works, you got to get Devin a lather. You know, Cook's got his role, and it was just hard to get Zach the role that he wants. And so I think this will give him an opportunity to showcase his skill set as well. So hopefully this is a win for the Bills, a win, you know, for Zach and, and the Colts in, in where they're headed. But. Go on. No, I'm good. I'm good. You're first, Al. So I guess really kind of two parts. I think the first part of it is what is the signal for Barry to change the book? If the sense would be that he's a rookie and want a better guy this particular season. The second part would be the school of thought was you guys need a banger at running back, a short yardage guy. Hines really wouldn't give you that. Can you handle maybe both of those aspects of it? Yeah, I think Devin's done a good job, you know, with – with his role of, of the short yardage stuff. I think we feel good um, with him in that role. I mean, Zach is a, is a banger, if you want to call if you want to use that word. But, um, you know, we still, the way our offense is built, we just, you know, his reps were limited. You know, he's a guy, he's probably going to be better if you're able to get him 10 plus touches a game, get, get that lather kind of going. And just, you know, you want to get Devin going and you want to get Cook the ball and, and you know the other guys. You know we got we got Josh, and we want to have the ball in his hands as well. So, um, and, and as far as James, like this is just another guy. This this won't this shouldn't affect James at all. This is a a proven commodity that does some of the same things, but also does. You know there can be as he learns the offense, there can be multiple packages where James and Naheem are in the game at the same time, or you know still James and and Devin, or Devin and Naheem. You know, I think it just makes us, it gives us the opportunity to be, you know, more versatile, multiple, you know, variations uh, of the different personnel packages that, that Coach Dorsey can, can put out there. Right. You, mentioned, you mentioned Josh <clears throat> in, as part of the mix in the short yardage role, and obviously given his mobility, that's, that's part of the offense. But I would ask the, the, the larger question, we've talked about this in the past, I think a lot of people would ask, are you comfortable with the way he's managing himself running the yeah, I mean, Josh is getting better and better at that. There's always going to be some plays. I mean, the other night he makes it on that third and 14 play, um, our second drive, our first touchdown. Makes it, when he gets that close to the goal line, your, your instincts kick in, Adam, where you're like, I'm going to get this ball over. I'm not going to assume because we get it to the two or the one that we're going to get in. All of a sudden you have a false start, a fumbles to anything. So, um, you know, Plays like that are third and short, fourth and short, you know, in big moments of the game, he's going he's gonna to do it. But I think he's done a better job. We ran the um, one of those drives. I think it was one Isaiah scored on. But we ran a little cue draw, and he slid, didn't take a hit. So I think there's, there's times he's doing really well. Um, you know, there's, he's still going to take – he's a competitive dude. And I think he's intentionally trying to do better and avoid those. He knows, you know, we got to keep him healthy. Um, but we also want the defense to have to worry about that fact. I think that helps, um, you know, our you know our chances to move the ball. What is the timeline for uh, Jordan if he's good? <clears throat> yeah, he's, uh, I would say he's day to day or, you know, or something like that. We'll see. I don't, I don't really, um, he's still healing up. But, yeah, we, you know, we'll just, we'll see how he goes. Yeah, I, I don't know a lot about their scheme. Like everything, I don't want to talk. You know, I know Coach Pease is a great coach, but um, more of that one was just you know you're watching his movement, you're watching what he's doing, making sure he still fits. And we feel like he's been in our system so long from back in his days as a rookie in Carolina. We bring him here, 
any plays. So um, it, Atlanta's scheme really didn't matter in the equation. Yeah, I mean, I think they always know we're trying to add players that can help us and, and competition, and um, that makes all of us better. And so even, at, you know, John, I could have told you at 1 o'clock yesterday if you'd have called me. You didn't call, but I'm just kidding. Um, but in all seriousness, like, neither one of these moves at 1 o'clock were anywhere near happening. And so if they didn't happen, you know, for whatever reason, I could have sat here and said we believe in who we got, and we and we do. But you do. I'm always going to look, and if it makes sense for, you know, the Buffalo Bills, you know, today and long term, we're going to try and make it happen. And there's again, of the two guys we got, there's another hundred plus that we looked into. Um, again, like I said, I think we looked at dug deep on just ten safeties alone, but we looked at other positions. Is there a chance to acquire a depth, maybe not a starter, but you know, a depth add piece just to assure us up, you know, should injury happen. But um, these were the two that we felt made made the most sense. Brandon, when when Tredavious is finally ready to go and ready to play, is there any sort of hitch count that will be placed on him or when he's ready, he'll be ready to get the job? We um, don't want to get into that really, Josh. Just we're just still taking it day by day. It's Wednesday practice and let's see how he does today. You know, he's he did more in practice last week than he did his first week. Um, he had no offseason, no training camp. So, um, you know, he's good to go, but we're trying to ramp him up and get him ready to play football. And so I wouldn't really want to speculate beyond just one day, one practice, one rep at a time. Yeah, it did. I mean, just again, a, a, another guy with speed, um, experience. Um, he can he can go out there and play slot. I mean, back at NC State, he was a punt returner, kick returner, receiver, running back. Um, he can just he can do a lot of things. So when he's in the huddle, you know, the the defense knows he's in the game, but they don't know exactly where he's going to line up. And I think you know you'll see that you know as as James gets going too. Uh, you know, you don't want to overload a rookie, but you know, he'll be, you know, used more as a receiver, slot, things like that. And, and so this just gives us a guy who's proven, who can add in, and and we'll see. But if we needed him to go play slot receiver for a game, you know, once he picks up the offense, he's got that skill set. Greg, can you give us some insight into how much um, it does put more on the plate of a guy like Khalil to do both during practice and prepare for a game where maybe this will alleviate some stuff, and especially for a rookie, because you touched on it, how much is there right there for that? Yeah, it is. I mean, this is a big transition uh, from Boise to the NFL. Let's be let's be honest. And Khalil, I mean, he's a very impressive. You know, I know if you guys have been around him and talked to him, he's just he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. When his number's called, he's ready for it. But um, naturally, that's a lot. That's a lot of pressure. And and again, we know the winds of Orchard Park. Um, you know, are only going to pick up probably. And so he's done a good job. But um, it's still you know catching. NFL punter legs consistently, you know, in some of these swirling winds, uh, it's, it's still a work. And, you know, I know Coach Smiley has done a great job during the week of getting him catching balls in our stadium, just how the how the winds swirl and things like that. But um, Naheem's done it for a longer time. It's a little easier, a little more natural. And so uh, if he's healthy and available, that gives us, you know, a guy so that Khalil can just, you know, focus on, on, on his roles uh, you know, that we need him on offense. No, it's um, it's that's awesome to hear, and uh, that's what you want. You know, the business gets in the way. You know, again, Zach Moss leaving. Zach Moss didn't do anything. He did everything he was asked. And I'm, you know, other than we're, when we're playing him, I'm rooting like hell for him. And so, 
the same thing when Dean Marlowe got a chance to go to Detroit and be a starter. He knew we had Jordan and Mike, and he got a chance to go start. You're rooting for him. And, um, but also, sometimes it works out. And I always tell these guys, you never know. Uh, the same thing told Zach yesterday, uh, that you never know. Uh, we wouldn't hesitate to bring you back if, if it made sense. So um, I'm glad to hear not only is Dean excited, but that his wife is excited. I know she's uh, talked to Dean this morning. She's due coming up. So uh, exciting times for him. But love hearing when, when guys, you know, Jordan Phillips and Shaq coming back this year. Um, that's the way you – the business gets in the way and sometimes feelings get hurt, but you, you like it when guys appreciate their time here. Yeah, I mean, um, without getting into that one, it's um, OBJ's a heck of a talent. You know, where he was drafted, obviously he had the, the great catch. And, you know, he might have been the MVP of that Super Bowl. Does he not, you know, tear the ACL? Uh, really unfortunate for a lot of things for him to have to, re, you know, re-tear that. But um, <clears throat> he's a heck of a player. You know, everybody in this room knows who OBJ is. And so I don't have to tell you guys. And again, you know me, if, if we think he can help this team, um, we'd be crazy not to at least look into it. And there's, all, there's, you know, and if we did, you have to remember there's financials, there's roles, there's all sorts of things that w would all have to line up. But um, yeah, you can, you know, a guy of his talent, of course, we would, we would look into that. Um, I, you know, I think they've done a great job, uh, you know, through seven games. And, you know, we've had obviously the injuries and, you know, even even the Miami game we lost, um, that might have been <clears throat> one of my prouder moments of the way these guys fought. And, and I thought Sean and the coaches did a heck of a job. I mean, Dane gets hurt the way he did. We find out later in the week that Micah, who's a captain team leader, is out for the year you know that's your that's your your brother someone you've you know who's been here and we've seen him from helping us start this culture to where it's at now and and so that life bothers you and then you go down there with <clears throat> you know we, we pulled up some practice squad guys and we got down to five linemen tommy doyle i think he played five snaps with a torn acl he he you know i asked tommy you know why didn't you lay down? He's like, I knew we didn't have anybody left. Like, and so he didn't know he tore his ACL, I don't think. But I think he had had a PCL before or something. He thought maybe he did that. But you know, you start with eight, and we're literally down to five, and the other three were ruled out of the game. So um, you know, in that locker room, guys were literally, you guys that were there were just laying, and, and they, they couldn't move. And I know we lost the game, but I was really, really proud, and I was like, you know this group will will rebound once they get their fluids back in their life. But no, I think they've done a they've done a really good job. It's it's, you know, we're not quite halfway there. A long way to go, but um, proud of of what Sean and and our coaches have done and what our captains, and our leaders have done to help, you know, this team, you know, start uh, six and one. Do you think this team is better prepared than maybe you know having gone through these, gone through some of these issues um, than maybe in the past? Um, better prepared for the rest of this season. Better prepared for facing more adversity or oh. adversity or, or <clears throat> better prepared for what happens in the playoffs. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think, you know, obviously our guys that have been here have have had a lot of meaningful football games that they've played and and um, sometimes failure teaches you the most and we've we've had that too. And so I know I've I've learned a lot from from my own failures, and I think these guys would probably say the same. Uh, you bring a guy in like Vaughn, who's won two championships, but is also, you know, until the Rams, you know, after his team beat us in Carolina in 15, he didn't go back to the playoffs until being traded to the Rams last season. So he knows what that looks like as well, and and I think that's given him a new, like, man, appreciation. Like, man, it is not easy to get there. I know I've won two Super Bowls, but. Uh, this this is not as easy as as some may think, or sometimes if you have success early in your career, you may you may think, oh, we just make the playoffs every year, and it, it's not the case. Is it hard not to know that, not to say that the moves you made aren't big moves or anything like that, but is it hard to not really swing for the fences when you look around and you see, oh, the Dolphins just traded their first round pick for Brandon Chubb, or the Chiefs just traded for a former first round pick in Kadarius Tony? I know you've told us in the past sometimes it's 
Yeah, I mean, um, you're always weighing those 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 calls. I mean, you know when you you call on a guy like Christian McCaffrey, that's probably not going to be cheap. Um, but you, you look into it, and it's got to make sense today, but it's also got to make sense for us long term. You guys know the guys that we have coming up with expiring contracts or guys that are available, and so that goes into that. We we really need our draft capital and. We do want to, you know, I'll reiterate, we do want to win this year. We're doing everything we can, um, but I don't want to be here next year as a team that people are saying, oh, they they lost it, and we're going to call them to see if they're selling off. Yeah, they don't have it. Uh, hopefully we're, you know, looking at the deadline again to see if there's something that we need, you know, to help us. I know Khalil, when you guys drafted him, you talked about him being able to play all over the place, do multiple things. What is your, you know, early, early in terms of your, like, your assessment of him specifically as a slot? How would you adjust to that? Yeah, I think he's done great. I think he's got a great feel. He's very instinctive, good hands. I think the biggest thing he needs right now is just more time with Josh, getting that rapport. You know, he probably worked more with Case and that crew through the preseason because Crowder and, you know, Isaiah were getting a lot of those roles there. And he was, you know, a backup as an outside guy. So um, I think that rapport is, will continue to grow. And, and I know Josh has full faith in him. He's, he's told me that. So, um, you know, the thing I like about him is his, when his number's called, he usually answers it and i um, excited about where he's heading. Brandon, how do you feel about the depth of your offensive line moving forward? Yeah, that's, that's a hard position, Joe. Um, you know, especially when you lose a guy like Tommy Doyle. Um, tell the guys tackles don't grow on trees. And uh, when, when they go down this time of year, it can be very thin you know, out there. And there's, there's not a lot of answers. And there's not a lot of people that are going to say, oh, you can come get one of my tackles. Um, so um, you know, I like the guys we have. I like some of the guys we even have on practice squad that we're developing. And I do believe if, if injury strikes, that they'll be ready if their number's called. He's still he's still working his way back. Um, I do think Ike has a good chance to to come back this season, and um, don't want to give a date yet. But he he's you know I think he'll get there and, and have an opportunity for us to at least open that practice window, see what it looks like, and and see where we're at. You know where where the linemen we have are at that time. Is there a possibility Jamison Crowder makes it back this season? I don't know yet on that one, John. I think that's too early. You know, Jameis is a competitive dude. He's been in here working, um, and I know he would love to come back if the opportunity was there. Um, but I don't, I don't have a timeline on him yet. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to say he could, could or couldn't. We haven't really got there. Unfortunately, he got hurt that second practice. Um, he's smart and he's got a lot of experience in the league, um, so I wouldn't want to say he he couldn't. But I haven't seen him do that. Yeah, I think I think the mental portion is the hardest thing when you're over when you're getting over something like this because um, you just rehab for so long and and you want to be out there with your teammates and you want to know it's going to go well and and all that and so um, I think that's what we're working on now is just regaining that confidence to plant and drive on that leg, not run straight forward. I think that's easy. It's just anytime you do something. I know, you know, I tore an ACL 200 years ago and. Um, at a high school level, and when you're coming back, you do naturally, you know, think of that um, until you, until you get hit a couple times. You get it rolled into, and you're, you get up, and you go, man, it's still attached. I'm still good to go. And so I think all that um, is part of it. But I think Trey's Trey's a competitive, competitive. I've seen nobody. I've seen guys rehab from ACLs really good. I'm not going to say it's the best, but I've seen nobody better than than Trey. The work he's put into it, like I. He took his family down to Disney World at one point, and he was rehabbing down there at some Airbnb or something. So um, proud of him, and uh, I'm just glad we're getting closer and closer. Do you know the Vikings coming into your next season? I know you talked a lot about the Steph trade and how that all went down, but I'm curious, is that one of those rare ones where it worked out for both sides pretty equally? Like, how do you look back on that now, especially with them coming to your team? Yeah, I mean, Elena, I think you want them all to be win-wins. You don't want to go, oh, man, every time I dealt with this team, they fleeced me or I fleeced them like you want it. And again, Zach Moss, I hope he goes on and has great success in Indy um, and that 
Naheem has great success for us. That's, that's the best. Um, but I do, in that particular instance, I think that worked out well. I think Steph fit us well. The timing was good of where, where we were in our build of this, this team. And they got a fresh piece in Justin Jefferson, who's very talented and has, has jumped right in there and been one of the best receivers in the league. So um, that's probably as win as win win as you as you would find. So you last, last one. How the the, the trade came together late yesterday for us getting you know after one PM. How much of it was Naeem wanting a different with the culture fresh, he wanted a different role, did they come to you? How did it kind of come together? Well, you know, I, I was aware that he, you know, was looking for a fresh start and so, you know, checked you know, with uh, with Chris a little bit on that Ballard, and uh, we talked. You know, one time Monday night, and then um, again yesterday a couple times, and didn't really think it was going to happen. And then we got we really picked that up shortly after three o'clock, and time was time was going fast. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll start with Dean. Uh, obviously, we're very familiar with Dean, and and uh, he's he was he was uh, a great addition when he joined us a couple of years ago. And um, you know, business happens, and and so uh, it's great to have him and his family back in Buffalo. And um, he's been a great culture piece for us, and and a guy that knows our system and is very familiar with what we do. <clears throat> and then uh, and then Hines, um, uh, you know, the skill set is is what you've seen. We've played against him a few times in 20 and then again in 21 and um, had respect for what he was able to do on the field. And um, you hear a lot about him just in terms of the person that he is, the type of person and how smart he is and then the way he plays the game. So uh, we'll see how it works out with both of those guys over the next couple of days, whether they play this week and what their roles are or not. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's a five-year vet. He's been a smart guy. What's realistic for his assimilation? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. He was at the walkthrough this morning, and and we'll see what practice looks like, what we can get in there, and just take it one day at a time, really, Chris. And you know, he's got to get a feel for us. We get a feel for him. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, everyone does it around the league their own way, right? The way that they that they want to do it, and we do it what we feel like is a good way here and appreciate when players um, want to come back, whether it's uh, by trade in this case or, or you know, just acquiring them through other avenues, other, other ways. But um, it's great to see a familiar face, and when you, when you call a player and he's excited, you know, to come back, and, I mean, that makes you feel good, right, just as a human being and, and for what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. Yeah, you know, really all those guys are, are day to day. Um, I, I've said that with Trey all along. Um, we're just going to take it one day at a time and we'll see where it goes. And to me, it's it's about the team. And uh, and uh, and that's the biggest driver of, of, of who we are and what, how we're trying to do things is the team is moving and, and Trey will, will get there when he's ready. Um, uh, as far as Jordan goes, he, he's day to day. Milano the same way. Uh, I think Taiwan similarly, and then we got a couple guys on vet vet rest days. Um, uh, Vaughn and and Roger in particular, uh, and Daquan a little bit as well. So um, you know, we'll see how it goes. And Milano is day to day also. I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be. I I think he'll be limited at best today. Go 
Yeah, again, I think if you if you look at it through the lens of Heather, the team, it's 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 just trying to get continue to move the team in the right direction and and get Trey back in the fold and and continuing to develop these young players who have done a have done a really good job and um, not stopping their growth in any way, shape, or form, but continuing to bring them along and. Uh, it all works out when you got good people and you do you try and do things the right way. It, it tends to work itself out over time. Brandon reported that Heather Gross was in question and now she went kind of eight hitter last minute. How involved are you yesterday, like in hearing what's going on? Like what are you doing when you figure all that out? Um, I'm just answering his calls for the most part. Um, no, I mean, you know, as coaches, we live in a different world uh, this time of year in particular because we're so routine based. We have to deliver a game plan by pretty much Wednesday morning uh, or Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. So you know, we've got some deliverables that we've got to get out there. And it's not as easy as uh, some would think, I guess, um, when you're trying to deliver a game plan and then also then um, do some of this over here. But, um, you know, we welcome the additions and, and uh, I'm never going to turn down good players, right? So it's uh, Brandon does a great job with that and his staff, and we have a tremendous trust in them. Yeah, I mean, you handle it as it comes. There's there's a lot of interruptions in, in this job, and um, part of this job is solving problems and adjusting. So you're, you kind of get used to it a little bit. Sean, the last couple of weeks have ruled out trade with more pretty broken knees. Mm-hmm. Are you holding out this week? No. Was last time when you when you ruled out, who knows if he might? Yeah, similar with Trey, like I said a few minutes ago. So we'll just see how it goes one day at a time. Sean, with, uh, with time being so short, you're the guy that has punt return capability. Serious contention window, and maybe not having to rely on two rookies down the stretch now. I know it's key role, but you've got a guy who can, you know, a veteran guy you've done before. Uh, I, I mean, we have tremendous confidence in those guys. I mean, you look at the work that they've put in. James just came off of his best game as a Buffalo Bill uh, on Sunday night, and um, I think Shakir has done a really good job in that role in particular. And um, a big part of that role is is catching the ball, and uh, people sometimes take that for granted. But that's a big piece of it. Um, So I I just think it's we're always looking to improve our team, and in this case, yeah, there's some overlap there, perhaps. But uh, we've found a way to what we think is improve improve our team, and that's what that's what we're doing. Do you see a difference in Zach Wilson from from year one to year two in in the last three starts of the season? Yeah, I would say um, you know when you play that position, there's a lot that's thrown out at at that position or at you um, as a rookie quarterback. And you see him growing and evolving um, this year from last year. And he's doing, he's doing some good things. And, uh, and they've, they've won uh, quite a few games to this point in the time. And um, this is a really good Jets football team. They play great defense. They've got great talent. Um, they've got great speed offensively, uh, great speed defensively. And, and uh, I think that's been well documented with, with the players that they have on both sides of the ball. Sure, we've seen the process here Yeah, that's a better question for Coach Sala. Um, we have all the respect in the world for them, um, and and it's clear um, that they're a really good football team. So um, as far as what stage they're in is probably a better question for him. When you're looking at them on tape, what did you see from Sauce Gardner so far this year? Yeah, um, you know when you build when you build a team, um, you know you're looking at a corner that can lock it down over there, and he's a number one corner for them. Uh, it appears, and he's. He's, uh, uh, he's been all that's been advertised about him. Didn't do him a lot myself going through the draft because we knew he was going to be gone, and he was, and, and that was a very good pick by them. He's off to a, uh, a very good start, so um, he'll, be, he'll be tough to deal with in the years to come for sure, and, and already is this year. Well, I know it's tough to only so say goodbye to players in this business. You had to do that with Zach this week. What yeah. does that mean to you for the rest of the career? Yeah, I mean, it is. That's the hard part, uh, as we shared as a team this morning. Is as much as you add, and some you know, there's there's subtractions, and um, those are hard. And uh, you hope um, that 
it's best for both in this case, right? You know, in terms of his playing time, what he wants, and also hopefully somewhere in, in here we get better maybe too. And um, so there's the personal side though that to me it's once a bill, always a bill, and, and I hope we can stay in touch. And he's, he was great. His family was tremendous. Um, he was a big part of, uh, of why we're at where, where we are and, and helping us get this, get this thing going a little bit here. Yeah, there was some, I mean, that's, I was kind of alluding to earlier, there were some challenges with that and, and uh, you know, how to defend them and, and where you're going to find them and some things like that. So um, he's, a, he's a little bit of a challenge. I know you look at the game a little bit differently now, years into your head coaching career. But is there, you know, when you guys are winning like you are, is it, you mentioned Sauce Gardner, not even looking at him. Is that kind of tough as a, as a media guy at heart, like mm -hmm. not being able to maybe sink your teeth into somebody like that? It's a really uh, yeah, I mean, but you make the most of it, and that's what you get paid to do, I think. You know, you'd love to be picking every year in the top five, ten, even when you win, but that's that's hard to come by. So, um, but I'm fortunate that um, we've found good players. I think Brandon, again, and his staff have done a good job. I mean, I've been around it with, with the other teams I've been, that if you're good and you're, and you're sustaining success, you're going to be picking towards the bottom third of the first round, usually unless you're able to uh, work a deal somewhere. So, um, and then it's about development. So, yeah. Oh, it's awesome. It's uh, the environment. Um, I know my folks were at the game last week and the environment down there, they take videos and send it. And so after our game uh, in, in the locker room, before I came in to speak with the with you guys, I was able to see that they won and, and the environment down there was was incredible. So again, it, rem it reminds me a lot about our environment here and our fan base, which is pretty cool. Are the teams still fun, or are you just anxious all the time? Watching the games, um, a little bit of both. I, my wife even sent me a video of of our of um, our kids who were flipping back and forth, watching the two different games and singing the uh, Union Fight song and, and that type of stuff. So it was it was pretty cool to see. <laughs> uh, we, I'm a routine guy, so uh, my brother knows that. But yeah, as soon as we get in, I know I've got a production meeting to do. Um, but I'll be trying to schedule that around the the union the union game. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right.